Hi, I'm Miss Hearn. Let's get started. In this video, we're going to talk about counting patterns of on-off switches the easy way using the fundamental counting principle. In the last video, we used systematic listing, which is a very powerful tool, but there are many situations where it's just not convenient to draw a tree diagram. So in this case, we're going to look at the same problem from a different angle. It says Pamela's computer printer allows for optional settings with a panel of four on off switches in a row. How many different settings can she select if there are no restrictions on the switches? The fact that we have these four on off switches and that there are no restrictions. For example, it doesn't say that the first two have to have the same setting or the first and third have to be in the on position. Nothing relating the position of one of the four switches to another means that these are independent events. What I mean by that is if there are two events A and B and the fact that A occurs doesn't affect the probability of B occurring, then we have independent events. And that's exactly the situation with these four switches. Whenever you have independent events, you have the possibility of using the fundamental counting principle, which is basically a counting shortcut that says that if one event has M possible outcomes and a second event has N possible outcomes and they're independent, then there are M times N total possible outcomes for the two events together. Here's what this means. We list out the switches, first, second, third, and fourth. These are independent events and we want to think about about how many ways for each to occur. The first switch can be on or off, so there are two ways. Regardless of what happened with the first switch, and that's where independence comes in, the second switch can either be in the on or off position, so two ways. Same for the third, and same for the fourth. Now remember, the fundamental counting principle basically is telling you that you multiply the number of ways each outcome can occur if the events are independent. So if we multiply the number of ways that each of them can occur, we're going to get two times two times two times two, or 16 possible outcomes. In the previous video, we came to the same conclusion using a tree diagram, where we actually listed out the 16 different possible outcomes. Let's look at a similar problem. Pamela's computer printer allows for optional settings with a panel of four on-off switches in a row. How many different settings can she select if at least one switch must be off? You might think that you would approach the problem the same way, but since we're told that at least one switch must be off out of the four, these may not be independent events. If they're not independent events, then the fundamental counting principle does not apply and we can't use the same technique. But how do we know? Well, it's very easy to figure it out by starting to try to use the same approach and asking yourself to analyze each step very carefully. So what are the options for the first switch? They can, it can either be on or off. So there are two ways the first switch can be. What about the second switch? Well, all we know is that at least one switch must be off. Still, you know, it's reasonable that we could have two ways to have the second switch. How about the third switch? The same thing goes. Regardless of what the first and second switches are, even if they were both on, the third switch could be on or off because if the third switch is on, we could still have the fourth switch be off. So there are two ways the third switch could be. But what about the fourth switch? Well, at this point we run into a problem because it's possible that the first, second, and third switches were all on. In that case, there's only one possible outcome for the fourth switch. We would have to pick that it's off because we need at least one off. But on the other hand, if any of the others were already off, it's possible that the fourth switch were on. In other words, the fourth switch result depends on the previous results. So these are not independent events. We can't say without knowing what the previous results were, how many possibilities we have for the fourth switch. When that happens, that means that we have to use other methods. We can either use a tree diagram as we did in the previous video, or if we want to avoid that, we're going to have to be sly about breaking the problem down, either break the problem into smaller categories in which we do have independent events and we can add together to get the total number of outcomes or perhaps overcount and subtract off the outcomes that we don't want. But we'll leave that for another video. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please remember to like it. That will help other students to find the video.